what is generative AI or we call Gen AI versus traditional AI and versus machine learning versus deep learning. What are meaning of each of these? I'm going to put explain in this video in simple terms, including the differences between each of these and which one to use when or from a basics concepts point of view. Also, I'll be talking about some of the tools available in each of these categories of from Microsoft Azure and as well as AWS about each of these topics that we you see here today. And but before that, if you're new to this channel, um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I'm going to I'm starting a new series about all about AI machine learning and uh, generative AI and with specific to the cloud on specific AWS and Azure Cloud. We are going to go deeper into these topics as well. Also, I'm going to cover some of the things uh, like the topics that you see in future, which is like what exactly is this LLM or large language model that we'll see as I'm going to cover here today. Also, what is foundation modules? What is common Genai models like GPT or BERT or T5? All these models, including task transformer, which is an important concept you need to understand if you're working on Genai, including what is LangChain and then some of the uh, core services from AWS and Azure related to AI and machine learning as well. So don't forget to subscribe. And before we move on, I go into this topic as well. If you are uh, watching this before 20th of July, which is Saturday, I'm doing a free class on uh, AI and machine learning on AWS or generative AI on AWS cloud, which is how to build and develop generative AI applications on um, on AWS cloud, which is you can register by going to k2academy.com for AWS AI 02. And, um, uh, and if you're watching this in past after July, you still might be having some sessions. We might be so keep an eye on that URL as well. Now with that, let's go and straight away uh, move uh, and talk about what exactly this generative AI and each of these concept means as well. So we'll begin with first artificial intelligence. And uh, so what exactly artificial intelligence is so artificial intelligence or we call it ai it's a broad concept of machines being able to perform the task that typically requires human intelligence these typical tasks might involve uh, things like including understanding languages recognizing a particular pattern that can give you the shape or size or or recognize and give you some pictures as well as solving the problems and making decisions on your behalf now, in simple example, you can take it as a, like maybe you have a robot or you have someone who's performing tasks on your behalf, like virtual assistant, like you might have been hearing Siri and Alexa as well. Then you have machine learning. And before that, I forgot completely to introduce myself. For those who are new to and first time to the channel, my name is Atul from team K20 Academy and I have more than close to two and a half decades of experience in IT and last more than a decade now cloud. And my journey now started on AI machine learning from last one or two years as well so that's what i'm sharing what i'm learning here what you should be doing as well so with that let's next part is about machine learning so what exactly is machine learning as the diagram shows machine learning is a subset of ai which basically it's about teaching computers to learn from the data you give a lot of amount of data and it learn based on that uh, that involves being programming a programming that machine or that computer to perform a particular task and in that you have something called as models, machine learning models that learn from examples uh, that you're giving it and they improve over a period of time as well. So how does these uh, machine learning works? You give uh, a machine learning model lots and lots of data and then it finds pattern based on the data that you've given to make predictions or decisions on that. So to look at machine learning from a simple example point of view, let's suppose you want to teach computer how to recognize a photo of a cat or it could be any uh, animal or human being, but just giving an example of cat. So what do you do? You show it thousands and thousands of uh, pictures of cat, which is actually cat and uh, tell him that it's cat, 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 repetitively. Similarly, you also show uh, the images which are not cat and over a period of time computer will learn to identify cats in the photo so that's how the machine learning works now, if you look at the example here from the diagram how does machine learning works you have a data set which you're giving it and then based on the data set it recognizes a, a pattern and then based on the pattern it's going to make this pred prediction so from a machine learning point of view you need to have the data set which is used to train that data set model 
and then data sets you have features and then labels now uh, so the goal is for this machine learning model is to make the, the features as an input and then find a formula that predicts the output uh, or labels that we call uh, or that in machine learning algorithm uh, language you call and the resulting algorithm will then can take a new data and then recognize pattern in the data based on the formula it has devised on that and that's how this whole machine learning works now if you're not sure if you need more descriptions or if you have any comments in the video or if you have any questions for me leave them under comment section for me please now for deep learning deep learning as shown in the diagram earlier it's a subset of machine learning which involves the neural networks with many layers and that's why it's called as deep learning or deep now now our deep learning or the neural networks are much more complex and then they can take the complex patterns in the large amount of data so for example they can do the face recognition an example of more complex um, models how do they work now they're inspired by the like uh, the deep learning is similar to what you do on a human intelligence or human brain structure and functions so they can analyze they can process and uh, the large amount of data sent and recognize an intricate pattern the importance is about entry case so if you give you lots and lots of pictures and say of the human pictures or a face and based on that face it can recognize the particular person so you give you based on eyes or maybe thumb impressions and so on it can recognize so example is you have a cat recognition model uh, but in the deep learning which is much more powerful more complex tasks like understanding the human speech or human face or and so on so that's what is deep learning as well then you have a generative ai and that is a topic which a lot of guys might have heard especially after chat gpt and are more keen on about as well so what is generative ai so generative ai is something that can in a simple terms is something that can create new content that content could be generating text it could be images it could be videos it could be stories it could even generate code and i'm going to see and we're going to see some tools and services from aws and azure what you can use to generate code uh, and you might be already familiar you might be already using uh, chat gpt from OpenAI, which we'll be talking about in future uh, videos like that um, now how does how does that chat gpt or the generative ai works what happens so generative ai works on using some models um, and model might be like gpt which is from uh, open open ai or bert and t5 from google and like that there are predefined models this is also something called as foundation models and in future episodes we are going to look at how to build your own generative ai on services like on using aws and azure that we'll see so these generative ai models are trained on vast amount of publicly available internet based data as well and that based on that they can generate as i said depending on the child kind of chat uh, the gpt you have or generative ai you have it can generate text it can generate videos it can generate sounds uh, based on what is coming what is there already and based on that what is going to come next as well now simple example is that you can tell or you can give generative ai some um few sentences of the story and it can even build your own story it can give you some uh some basic like for example uh some words in a sentence and it'll complete the sentence for you as well in a much much comprehensive and um, uh, creative way as well now there are lots and lots of use cases that you see in generative ai and in, in, in this uh, in this uh series we are going to look at some of these things in future but very high level how generative AI is helping today so you as i said for developers or for individuals like you and me it's using code generation we can even write code in fact in our all our programs we recommend now how to develop and write your own code uh, code uh, like for example terraform code or any build a cicd build tool a code and so on it also helps or helping in uh, improving the customer experience uh, so for example you already have chatbots virtual assistants intelligent contact centers contact centers personalization uh, so in fact uh, a lot of insurance companies are using uh, based on taking a decision based on the in insurance data to decide whether to allow or not allow and of course on top of that there's a human inter intervention or human uh, verify those data as well so improving the customer experience it can even uh, boost the employee productivity one of them as i said is we are also using to create our a lot of our marketing material content sales pages 
or a content generation part as well using and in future you might see uh, a video being created i give the content i give my picture and you can even create some videos based on there are there are automatically generative ai tools available now to do that as well it's also creativity i've already said i mentioned text music animation stories and so on uh, then you also improve the business operations so for quality control checks um, even doing all the maintenance task repetitive task you can delegate it using uh, using uh, generative ai as well now some real time example is if you see alexa um, there's a storytelling um, i think i'll leave this uh, comment or this if you go to this url and using the um, alexa you can even create a stories for you uh, as well now 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 i wanted to keep this video short and crisp so uh, just to give a context about gen uh, generative ai they are based on llms large lang uh, language models and there is some predefined foundation models which are going to cover in the future episodes as well so you have a foundation module uh, sorry not module foundation models and uh, that's uh, basically uh, what these are will cover that in future as well now from a concept point of view from a, sorry from a differences point of view what is the difference between ai machine learning uh, deep learning and gen generative ai as well let's look at that next so i'm not going to repeat the definition here because i've already covered that but if you look at the approach that uh, ai uses or traditional ai uses these are rule based explicitly programming and kind of a think okay you can think of a hard code uh, so i have a, a cleaning system on uh, it's a robot which goes and uh, uh, plays uh, and uh, looks around and cleans the uh, floor so that's an example of um, traditional ai machine learning whereas on the other hand are data driven and these are relies on a statistical method based on data they they uh, you have a algorithms and based on that they will give the result as well on deep learning again they are still also the, also data driven but they go and use multi layered neural network much more deeper and much more advanced as well generative ai on the other hand is again also data driven but uses deep learning models um, on uh, so basically subset of that deep learning a specific type of deep learning written on a large language models llms models that we'll see in future as well so example of that you have game ai or, or i've already mentioned about uh, the cleanings um, or there are robots and so on available um, example of machine learning you have a image recognition system or spam filters that you see on a broad category uh, deep learning voice uh, assistant so if you look at uh, my uh, when I log into my uh, my banking nowadays for chat assistant or the phone assistant they recognize my identity based on my voice as well so speech recognition and whereas generative ai examples are you're already using chat gpt and if you're not using you should be using chat gpt from open ai or delhi uh, and so on now the training uh, more like the data on which every all these things run built on top of data so um you have for training data you have limited use of or no use of data it's basically predefined set of rules whereas in machine learning that they again large data set but needed to learn from the examples uh, deep learning they need further much more deeper uh, very large data sets and and then it also needs significant amount of compute which means it need memory and cpu uh, in order to process that data as well and generative ai very very large data and learn based on the complex part pattern again when we go on llms that's when we're going to cover that as well um, now you probably um, already know about output i'm not going to cover that what i'm going to do is maybe an um, example maybe a few things on out of here as well let me look what i want to cover on specifically that will be important for you i think the important point is um, about use cases where we're using and generative ai <clears throat> as i said earlier for content creation for automotive writing for creative designs whereas uh, the deep learning is for autonomous uh, driving you have real time uh, uh, translation recognition image rec uh, the photo like the uh, human face recognition voice recognition and so on and uh, on uh, the machine learning is for uh, speech recognition uh, and so on now example techniques and this is where i'm going to go deeper on a later part have a read on this but things like uh, cnn models or rnn models or gans and we're going to go deeper into as we move forward in this uh, in this uh, basically the channel now but next and final part about is that looking at some of the services and tools with respect to each of these components that are available from 
to the most two common uh, cloud providers, which is AWS and Azure. So from here, I'm going to highlight the key points or key services Amazon recognition probably you might be already using or will be covering in future like image recognition, video analysis and so on. Similar to that in Azure, you have Azure cognitive services for vision, speech, etc. So you can convert audio and produce you the text and so, so on as well. And these are other services related to AI services on Azure and AWS. The machine learning services, you have a Amazon SageMaker, which is a uh, ML studio, which does end-to-end, -end, uh, basically end-to-end, -end, very in-depth, uh, customized uh, machine learning and uh, AI and Gen AI and a lot of other things you can do, which is SageMaker, whereas, uh, whereas on corresponding product on from Azure is Azure Machine Learning. Now, there are other, in order for you to do the machine learning, you need other things like compute, data, data processing, and these are all other services related to those as, as we go forward and deeper into these topics we're going to cover later in future episodes like for example data factory or on from azure or glue from aws is for bringing the data from a multiple sources and creating the data lake uh, or lake houses on which then processing can be done for the data as well and so on from a, if you look at uh, dl or deep learning services from you have uh, like in order for you to build these uh, deep learning uh, algorithms, you need some processing or CPUs and these are all uh, the underlying virtual machines or chips that are available from AWS and Azure. And they're also associated development kits or software de development kits to create those deep learning services as well. Now, I'm going to go, we, in future episodes, we are going to go deeper into generative AI related. So from Amazon, you have Amazon Bad, Badrock, which is a uh, and bedrock comes in two parts which will be covered in future but think for now amazon bedrock which is a AWS services for generative ai similarly from a microsoft azure you have azure open ai as well and then you have a code whisper which is for generating a code similarly here in git uh, in in a, uh, microsoft azure you have a github copilot which will be uh, uh, suggesting you the code as you're writing in your integrated development environment which is main helpful for uh, basically the developers and coders you also have chat ops for devops similarly you have integrated um, all these tools that you see are going to be integrated with from either from microsoft or from aws um, they're integrated with uh, these chat GP, basically sorry these uh, generative ai related tools as well so just to do a quick recap on um, this uh, like um, the on a very high level artificial intelligence is a top layer under that you have a machine learning below that you have a deep learning which is a subset of deep learning is a subset of machine learning and then generative ai is a part or a subset of deep learning as well now as i said in the future web episodes i'm going to go deeper into these llms uh, foundation modules common uh, tools as well so before we go forward um, don't forget to subscribe to this free class k2academy.com for slash aws ai02 um, so that enter your name email address and phone number uh, if you're registering if you're coming here before uh, the 20th of july and future also just go to this url and see if there's another class we run we keep uh, doing these sessions different times as well apart from that let me know uh, the feedback whatever positive constructive uh, feedback any constructive feedback that will help me to improve uh, these content going forward i'm as i said i'm aiming towards at least one video per week on generative AI as well. And also let me leave me in the comment section what topics you want to see more, what questions you have. And I want my objective is to keep it simple, high level to the point in easy to learn, understand concepts as well for all about generative AI, AI and machine learning. With that, this is Atul from team K2 Academy. I'll see you next week in another video on AI and machine learning. Take care and bye for now.